Hi, this is Ted. Today I'm going to be talking about Apostle Catherine Crick. To begin with, I'm going to be talking about the methods she uses. She uses some very interesting ones. She has a lot of charisma. She's very animated. And she seems very confident. And those things are pluses. They help sell people. Uh, she has the title Apostle, which is another thing. Uh, a lot of Christians like titles, and they like to borrow or steal titles or use titles when they don't deserve it. But she has the title Apostle. Now, Jesus was not a big fan of titles, at least in his day, with the people of his day. People who use titles for status. That's what Jesus was kind of against. Nevertheless, this is very influential in the world's eyes and in a lot of Christian circles. Apostle Catherine Crick has a very effective formula using both old and new tricks. She borrows from the old. Benny Hinn, Catherine Kuhlman, both use testimonies and slaying but they also use crutches and wheelchairs and a lot of props that she's not using and, and leaning upon as much. But she doesn't need to because she has something else because she's borrowing also from the new. Uh, she's using basically, at least so far what I've seen, is the machine gun approach. She's made it big through TikTok and YouTube Shorts. And those are designed to, within a minute or two, be able to have the entire story told. So you will see, and even in those minute or two, when you're looking at the shorts and the TikTok, you're seeing perhaps several people being delivered and jumping up and down and, and puking or whatever, all being delivered from evil spirits. She also uses the New Apostolic Reformation design of what a prophet should be. I see, she says to this guy, I see so many things you struggle with. I see so many things you struggle with. So many, like sins, but it's really yokes that you try to stop so many times, but you just need freedom. And God knows that. Today. Now, there are two um, very interesting portions to this I'm going to be talking about. Just that one sentence. I see so many things. This, it doesn't really come from the psychic world. The psychics use this, however. Because in some ways, it kind of separates you from being exact. You know, in the Bible, Agabus told Peter, no, Paul, you're going to be going. You're going to be tied up. You're going to be ending up in prison. He doesn't say something like, I see in a crystal ball. I call that this crystal ball method, by the way. But he says very exact to the point, you will be going. Both psychics and this new apostolic reformation prophetic movement They've discovered tricks that work. And in both cases, you have people who are really believe uh, these tricks are not tricks, but just the way that God is speaking through them. The psychic, of course, is the way that my psychic abilities are being used. But you also have people on both sides who know this is just a method. It's just the way that we can, it works. It's a formula that works. And so they use this, I see something. And because people look up to you, and people really think you're somebody special who does have insight, either from God or from the crystal ball. I believe both groups have learned from trial and error and from learning from others in their own group, teaching them how to do things they watch, they, they learn. So I would call this the crystal ball approach. Prophet Chris Valatin, he's teaching prophets in uh, Bethel Church up in Redding, California, thousands of prophets. 
And in his book, he uses an example where he says, you may say to somebody as a prophetic uh, word, I see you like such and such. It's an interesting parallel. Secondly, in that one sentence, I see that you are struggling with something. That's the Barnum effect. What's the Barnum effect? You say something very general. And because people look to you to have this authority and insight, they're going to take that general and narrow it down to their problem. There's things you struggle with, she says. Sins, yokes you tried to stop so many times. All right, how many of you in watching this video have struggled over sin? How many of you? I'm going to say every one of you. So this is just a generalization. Now, she's going to probably narrow it down a little bit. It's sexual in nature. But even that is so general. It's the Barnum effect. So he believes that he's getting word of God. This struggle that you've been having with, fill in the blank. I've heard you. And now she gives him the promise. You are freed. Of course, she delivers him, casts out the demon. And he goes through an experience, which I want to talk about in a minute. After being delivered... She says, you are freed, you're cured. God will do miracles through you. He will use you. You will reach people around you. Now, I'm going to tell you straight out, he's come to be prayed for. He wants more of God. That's not hard to see. So, he's being given something he wants. He's being told that. Psychics also learned that this is very important when they talk to people. Keep it positive. Get it really positive, especially at the end. And people will come back to you. So what's going on here? I know from experience, but I'm going to talk real briefly about him, and then I'll talk about my own experience with being having demons cast out of me. Uh, he will, for a, a short while, hour, two, maybe a day or two, he's going to feel really good. God has heard my prayer. I'm going to overcome this. But the problem is it's going to come back to him. The temptation, the same temptation, the same level of temptation, maybe even more. And when he gives in, he's going to think, you know, Jesus said that every demon that leaves, seven more, when, when there's a clean house, seven more will come to take its place. And when those seven go, there's going to be 49, because each one of them have seven. Then 343. Then 2,401. Then 16,807. And falling again, it's going to be 117,649. The next time it'll be 823,543. And one more time, it's going to be over almost 6 million. Oh, believe me, this ran through my mind. When I was young, very young Christian, this teaching engulfs us in a demonic world. Every failure is filled with demons, oppression, possession, generational curses, and they're constant. And they come back over and over, even after being delivered. Now I'm going to talk about my own experience. By the way, some of that came was part of my own experience a short while. I saw through it pretty quickly when I realized <laughs> it's a little ridiculous thinking I have millions of demons. But I was reading one day in, in the book of Romans, the first few chapters, and don't ask me how, because I, I've looked back at these chapters and I don't see 
how, but the Holy Spirit was revealing to me, there is freedom in Christ. Yeah, I came out of a, a sin-filled world. I you know, was doing drugs and pretty much just doing my own thing for years. But there's freedom in Christ. And this was such a contrast to the world I was getting into of demonic oppression and possession. Now, when I was reading Romans, it, I was, I had a problem because I was convinced that my experiences were real. I was really delivered from demons as a Christian. Derek Prince, him preaching and talking to us about demons in Christians. I, I, I knew when I went up forward to be delivered, I was delivered. I felt it. And that's exactly what I said to God as I was struggling with this contrast. You're saying there's freedom, freedom in Christ. And I really felt like the Holy Spirit was saying, there is freedom in Christ. And I said, but what about, what about those experiences I had? And I was thinking back to the experiences of being delivered. And the very next verse, I just, that's the word for word what I said. What about those experiences? I don't know if I prayed out loud or to myself, doesn't matter. But I looked down at Romans 3, 4, the next verse. Let God be true and every man be found a liar. And I gave up that whole teaching. My favorite preacher was Derek Prince. And I just wanted more and more and more of these leaders teaching because I wanted to know everything about God. And here I am reading the Bible and finding out I got to give them up. It was the first step, and I did. I did give them up. And that is it today. That's it. All right, you all have a good one.